Why? Because 13-year-olds sign up for these websites like mm -hmm. MyPlace.com, and they sign up and say, I'm 26. And then <laughs> the LA Times had the article because one little girl met up with a guy who was actually 26, and he killed her. And this is happening day after day. They're lying about who they are at a time in their life. You know, I've got to tell you people that at 13, you don't want them experimenting with who they are. You don't want them lying about who they are. That's in a stage of development where the reflection stage, we used to call it navel gazing, where they have to know who they are, where you have to enforce and help them understand that they're Rhonda and Rhonda is a nice person and Rhonda's got certain gifts and talents. You don't want them to say, Rhonda, you got to pretend that you're, uh, you know, Norma Jean or right. whatever else because you don't want to be Norma Jean. You don't want to be somebody else. You want to be Rhonda. So this lying makes them schizophrenic and psychotic. You're producing a whole generation of kids that are psychotic. This is a very serious... I could go on and so on. You can, don't want me to go on. What can on. parents do, though? Well, it's they, very, you know, it's an attractive thought to think, medium. I'm just going to throw the television set right out the window. I've been tempted yeah. to do that. That's not such a bad time. idea. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually, a study that but just came... But I don't came... want to throw out 100 Huntley Street, so <laughs> that's why we keep it. 100. They, actually, in England, they said for little kids, if you want them to be happier, cut their TV viewing by 50%, and they'll become much happier children. That's uh, true. And we know that little kids in the, in the formative stage... Now, you have to understand that children re reflect differently on television at different stages. Media wisdom is simple. One, you have to understand the influence of the media. Now, that's all we've been talking about. It influences children. We know plenty of that. You can get my book, Media Wise Family, tell you about that. Two, you have to understand children at every stage of development react differently to the media. That's what I'm saying when they're in the reflection stage. They look at the media differently than the concrete stage. The concrete stage is 7 to 11. You haven't gotten there yet, but that's when they say, Mom, that's just a rubber shark. They don't, right. they don't paint. But that's a, that also has its pitfalls. Three, you have to understand how the media works. You know, I go into c groups and I say, um, okay, everybody, put your hand. Here, do what I'm doing. Put your hand on your chin. Now, why would you put it on your cheek? Oh, because I saw you put it on your cheek. Right. And I heard you say. Chin. Put, put your hand on your chin. So when a, when a movie says, like <laughs> Wedding Crasher, after this guy's had free <laughs> sex at all these kids. weddings, you know, one of the things that came out two weeks ago or a month ago was that there were all these wedding crashers. Now, what is wedding crasher? At the end of wedding crasher, he decides to have a monogamous relationship. He says, put your hand on your chin. But everybody's seen the sex, and that's why they're crashing weddings. They think, ah, I'm going to get free sex by going to weddings. So the message of the media is 60% visual. So you have to understand the grammar of the media, how the media works. The next, you have to understand how to ask the right questions. What are the right questions? Who is the romantic interest? And how does this romantic interest deal with reality? And how does she deal, you know, is it Joan Crawford who's got a knife out, wet, ready to kill you? What kind of a romantic interest is that? You've got to understand who these, who is the villain, who is the hero. And next, you have to understand your values. What is my value? Do I think it's good for women to be reviled and trivialized? You know, most of the victims on primetime TV are women. Oh, definitely. So kids think that women, and that becomes their scripts or behavior, are just to be treated poorly. And the number of abuse cases have increased dramatically. Well, as you've said all this week, that if your child has even a modicum of intelligence, they're going to be influenced. And the more intelligent they are, the more likely they are to be influenced by what they're seeing. I am very, very careful about what my three-and-a-half-year-old son, Matthew, watches on television. Uh, we limit the amount of television that he watches. But even at this stage in his development, even being so very careful, I feel that television has taught him to be afraid of the dark, that monsters live under his bed, and uh, that it's, it's not, you know, that bedtime is something to be reviled. And that'll happen throughout his life. So he'll be struggling with the false messages right. of the media. And, I mean, we could get into all sorts of message. Revisionist history. You know, the producer was asking us about that. Well, that's what the Nazis did in order mm -hmm. to declare the Holocaust. They had to rewrite history. They had to write the Jews out of the Bible. And it was a sad moment in, in world history. And it's going to be a sad moment in our history when we do it. So teach your kids to be media-wise. We've got the tools, the media-wise family. Well, speaking We've got of the website, tools, right? you've got your website, uh, www.movieguide.org. And 
you're offering a free service to pastors because you feel it is so important to get it into their hands. Right. Once a week, they can get a list of the... Every, every week, five movies are released. And I went by the sign of a mo local movie theater. I think there were 20 movies on it. And David uh, Maines and I were there, and he said, oh, I didn't know those were good movies. You need to know before your kids go and before your church go. One pastor, uh, I was told this morning, had gone to another site, but the site was by people who weren't, uh, you know, a Judeo-Christian background. And what they were commending was not something that that pastor wanted to see. So if you want to know from a Christian perspective, from a Judeo-Christian perspective, what's hot, what's not, and... Uh, we're not doing this for the sake of uh, ourselves. We're doing it for the sake of the pastors helping the church to become media wise. I am so grateful to you and your staff for watching these movies so I don't have to. I can't imagine uh, the time, the money that is being saved, and more importantly, the influence. Well, it's extremely important because our future is at stake. What's happening when I see that bar <laughs> graph of 70% of the kids knowing the Ten Commandments to 4%, it breaks my heart because I know that what they're moving into is a very difficult period where we're going to have a new barbarism. We need to return to faith and values in our society for the benefit not of us but of our children and grandchildren. We need to help our children to respect uh, each other, to respect the other sex, to love each other, to care for each other. If we could do that, we could make a much better world for the future. Dr. Ted Baer, it has been a fabulous week. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And of course, Dr. Ted Baer, the founder of Movie Guide and author of The Media Wise Family.